Hey, everyone. Hello. Hey, how are you? How's it going? Good. Glad Very to hear good. It. Cool. Very good. Uh, congratulations on the film. I mean, you know, we're a little bit out from people. Well, I was going to say the world. I was like, I guess people on their computer screens seeing it. It's it's weird this year. But uh, I saw it last night and I quite enjoyed it. So congratulations, first of all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. My pleasure. Um, so before we talk about it a little bit, just like, how do you guys feel about the situation? I'm sure you, you know, when you have in your mind, like, oh, we might go to Sundance, you know, you have the the stories in the back of your head of like, oh, Kevin Smith and Clerks and all the, you know, all the like success stories and, you know, walking around in Utah and being like, oh, people start to recognize me and all the kind of fun stuff. And now, you know, they're like, well, you don't have to wear pants this time. You know, we're <laughs> be a little different. How, how do you guys feel about it? Oh, it's a, it's less cold, uh, uh, you know, and it's funny you bring up Kevin Smith. He's a huge inspiration of ours, but uh, yeah, you know, we're just honestly stoked to be involved and this wasn't part of our plan, <laughs> you know, so we're just amazed that this is even happening at all. Cool. Yeah, it's, then, like a, yeah a dream. it's like a dream come true, honestly. I mean, I never, I'm new to acting and this being my first feature, like, I mean, what a way to kick it off right so it's like it's crazy crazy exciting yeah it's it's pretty surreal uh every day I kind of pinch myself because I'm still just like wait what we're in Sunday like every day it's a, it's a thing because I have friends and stuff that's like they'll always text me and stuff like oh congrats and I'm just like oh wait yeah we are in Sundance yeah thank you for that <laughs> <laughs> awesome um and then just uh so to kind of start at the beginning, how, what made, um, you know, for you guys who actually, you know, wrote it, what, what made it a story you wanted to tell? And then once you, you know, were able to, to get the, the money and, you know, a film is going to actually happen, what made the, these guys the right people to cast? And then for, for you guys, like, when you see the script, what, uh, you know, obviously being newer to, to the industry, like, what, what spoke to you about it to make it something to pursue? So we can kind of just like evolve with how the film came to be. Okay. The story kind of came out of, we were one morning at breakfast at my house. Um, we basically were having car troubles. Yeah, I was having car problems. And I was kind of complaining about, you know, when you buy a used car, you never know who had it before you. Don't know what they did to it. Don't know what kind of life it had. And that just sparked an idea. Well, what if we made a movie about a high school kid getting his first car? And we just started throwing ideas back and forth. And we really, the outline um, we outlined the story just over breakfast. Yeah. Just a rough outline kind of of the complete story. Everything that happened was there. And then we started, you know, fleshing out the characters and, you know, kind of uh, figuring out who those people were. And it came together so quickly. And we knew we had to, to yeah, to get out there had, and shoot this yeah, film. It's like, we're meant to shoot this one, you know, we're meant to make this. Yeah. Uh, so we took some time, wrote the script, uh, you know, we wrote it a couple times. And then uh, we just thought, well, we don't exactly have the money to fund this right now, but we have the money to fund a few scenes. We started with yeah, stuff that we could we yeah. could do right away. We didn't scene. even have the, the vehicle for right. like we a didn't, month or two until we, we didn't, into the right. Shooting. So uh, so Tyson and Shelby were cast before the car was cast. <laughs> you know, kind of, we were shooting around it. We shot a scene where it's supposed to be behind him in the driveway, and he's like looking at nothing. Um, but, uh, you know, and uh, so we shot the opening scene first. It was relatively easy to, you know, with one actor. Yeah. We could show that to people who were interested. They helped use that to help have a, a financing and fundraising tool. Our producer, Brandon Krause, was very instrumental in that process as well. And then we... Who also found the car for us. Yeah, he found the car eventually. And uh, then we, you know, we decided to cast, start casting before we had the full budget as well. So then we thought we can shoot dialogue scenes between like, you know, the two leads and some of the more simple stuff first and then build up to the rest of it. That's how it happened. And we went through uh, the, the local Sacramento uh, kind of greater Northern California film community since we shot it up here in Valley Springs and started reaching out, uh, taking auditions. And that's how we met Tyson and Shelby. And as soon as we saw their individual tapes, we thought, oh, we got to meet these two. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as we saw them together, doing a scene in, together in person, it was like instant. We just knew they were the one. Awesome. Yeah, we were so lucky <laughs> yeah. when they came along. <laughs> awesome. Well, you guys, talk about coming along. 
Yeah, it was, um, you know, I was very new to acting. And so, you know, they asked for the self tape and that was fun, uh, fun for me, <laughs> kind of a disaster, but it was good. And um, then, you know, the casting process took a little bit of time. And then when I met Tyson, we did the screen test and uh, it was actually a lot of fun. It came pretty natural, you know, like I think Manuel and Darren kind of seen that, but in the moment, I mean, Tyson and I, I think we're both nervous and um, luckily it didn't show, but it came, came through well. And um, it just, it's been so much fun ever since the whole, you know, seeing it, meeting up at the park before we even started filming and going through the characters and like what we wanted to portray and their backstories and all of that was such a fun process to, to go through together. So, and I think that takes, you know, a lot of Manuel and Darren's just help and direction and, and getting there. And it was, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty nervous at the beginning of all of it. Cause I was pretty new to acting still am. And, uh, once I got past the nerves, I just kind of just told myself to have fun. There were a lot of times where I did like either bring Darren or Manuel to the side, like, Hey, am I doing good? Is this, <laughs> is this good enough? And they were always just like, yes, you're fine. Like we wouldn't have chosen you if, if that wasn't the case, but um, yeah, it was just a great time. And just the story kind of just captured me alone. Just this, this big, just roller coaster of events. And it's just like reading it kind of think, you know, it's going to happen. And then that just doesn't happen. And you're just like, this is cool. Like even as a reader and as the actor, you're still just kind of just thrown off. So I like, I like that a lot. For sure. And that's actually something I was going to, I was going to ask uh, Manuel and Darren about there's it's, it's, it's surprisingly hard to tell this kind of story to, to, to navigate, you know, like stakes, but also comedy and, 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 and to make it not feel like, I guess jarring is the right word to be like, Oh wait, someone just got killed. Wait, well, where are we? Like you need to, it needs to make sense. For you. Balance. Yeah, you gotta be like, oh, I guess this makes sense. Like, or or specifically to toy with that and go, okay, someone expects X, so I'm going Y because I want them to be surprised. And I'm just curious how you guys, as you mapped it out, made sure that that was the case. And then also just because you mentioned it before, how did you cast the car? Because it does have to be a very specific car. It has to be a piece of shit, but also somebody <laughs> has to value it. It kind of has to be like the Dodge in Married with Children. Yes, yes, exactly. The car was, um, uh, well, that particular car was just a practical choice. Our producer just found it in Santa Rosa and it was affordable. It's like, and it ran kind of, you know, <laughs> we kept, we had, you know, jumper cables, you know, and, at the ready. Yeah. So, so it was a mix of that, but we also knew we needed something like a very late sixties car that looked like a hunk of junk and something that wasn't cool, like wouldn't be cool for a kid to necessarily be driving around in. It's not like a cool classic car. Yeah. But then when you look at it in certain ways, under certain lighting and as we kind of, are actually driving it and you know realizing it, that it does handle well sometimes it has a lot of power it has a beauty to it and a nostalgia to it so i wanted it to have kind of those layers to it hmm. kind of like the main character in a way yeah uh, and uh then uh gosh i mean as far as uh you know the rest of the production and twists and turns we love those kind of movies uh we love and, and we feel like they're not made quite as much anymore. For sure. Any movies that have a like, kind of big ambition to them and take you on journeys that you don't necessarily know what to expect. That was super important to us. Um, and so that was like the mission from writing the script. How can we flip this? How can we turn this in a different way? How can we have characters that you don't expect to overlap? Uh, come into each other's lives, like, you know, the way that uh, Tarantino does it or that, you know, the Coens and, and so many others have done so well. We, we just we love that stuff. We just wanted to do something like that in our hometown. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And then I think, uh, I think the characters are also written really well because, you know, even with the premise, it could be easy to have very stock, like, okay, teen movie characters. We need, we need this type of guy, this type of girl. And, and there's something really um, interesting about you know, Tyson said earlier, like pulling the sun doing, am I doing a good job? Like, that's kind of what the character would do. Like, he's very much a, all right, uh, maybe I don't want to be in this situation. Like he's, everything is sort of is stumbling into it, but he's not a, a, like a bumbling character. He's just, you know, a little more passive than you would normally have at a protagonist. Whereas 
Shelby makes Kelsey very much someone who's like the smartest person in the room and, and has a joke at the ready and can be very sort of biting when necessary. And, and I, I just love that even she even does it when someone's pointing a gun at her, like her first instinct is still just around. Yeah. <laughs> but just curious about playing that because it was such a fun little addition that, that, you know, not every movie would have. This would either be way sillier or way more serious in a lot of other ways. Yeah, um, that scene always sticks out to me too. Just like when I read it, I'm like, oh my gosh, like she's really saying this, this guy's got a gun. I mean, it. I'm, I was even shocked by it, but it was fun to play like a fearless type of person that doesn't, you know, in my everyday life, like that's not something I would ever do. I'd be terrified, but mm -hmm. to play this like super strong girl who just, you know, like you said, she can drop a joke at, I mean, with nothing. It's, she's just super strong, fearless. And it was actually really fun to, to play that. Awesome. Yeah, and Tyson for playing, for making him such a, like, I guess passive is the right word. Like, I don't want to be the first one to do anything in this scenario. Like, I want to not be involved in calling her because this is embarrassing. I want to not be in this house buying this car. This seems off. I want to not have this woman shooting a gun at me. Like, everything is about, like, extra extracting himself from the situation. How, how do you play that in a way that's interesting? Because it could also come out as, like, oh, a character doesn't want to be in the movie. Why do we want to watch him? <laughs> uh it it's a nice fine line of just getting it right and uh Mario and Darren had a lot of uh helped me a lot with like getting that right and just me and myself taking my own time to just watch um other characters that are similar to Mike just studying those kind of actors do the do their part and just kind of like using that as notes and going from there other than that a lot of facial features went into this and um uh, I think that just helped a lot yeah. Because it wasn't just the blank dead face when he wasn't saying anything. I just always try to keep his face kind of lively. Um, even if he wasn't realizing that he had these weird facial um, gestures, it was just great to kind of like play around with that. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, he do, always does have the face of like, what? This, I just wanted to like have a normal day. Like, I didn't want yeah. to be involved in any of this. I'm not even, it's almost like we were, when we mentioned Kevin Smith, like I'm not supposed to be. There's a lot of potential in doing that. And, and I think you guys even do a good job with the, with the supporting characters of, of making them a little weirder, but still part of this world. Like the first time you meet most of them, they're all doing something a little bizarre. Like, <clears throat> you know, when he meets the cops, like, you know, why, why is, why is she being like so understanding? Like that's, that's a little off or, you know, when we talk about, you know, Kelsey correcting the guy pointing a gun at her, he's still, when he has to like answer the phone, you know, excuse me. Like there's still like this odd sense of like propriety and like, I don't really want to be in this situation either. That yeah, I just, totally. I'm curious, like, how do you, how do you consistently make sure that you have that kind of vibe throughout the film? Cause I got to imagine it's a lot easier to be like, I don't need this character for that long. They can just kind of get what they need to do and go. Yeah, and that was uh, something we were really aware of, and we wanted to make sure we avoided when actually shooting the film. Uh, you know, a, a lot of that went into the writing. Again, mm -hmm. all those references of films we, you know, filmmakers we love, they take care of every character. There's no, there's no small role in a way. Yeah. Every character has an inner life and something interesting about them where you just want to watch them for a few more minutes, even when they're gone. Mm -hmm. And so that was the mission we wanted to bring that to this film, and the actors helped. So much with that I mean we had such a great cast of supporting characters you know I mean I can rattle off names Jesse Jansen, Ryan Adams, Nicole Berry, Sam Adamola, Lee Affinity they all took it super seriously and even brought a lot to the script uh, either in rehearsal time or you know discussing motivations and reasons why their character would do these things that uh, went beyond what we had discussed amongst ourselves. And then even through some improv at times, you know, just letting certain actors who thrive under those conditions have the freedom to do that while we were shooting. And that, like working with the actors and the performances, I think that was probably my favorite, one of my favorite parts of yeah, uh, absolutely. doing the whole thing. Yeah. It, was, it was like making a movie with a family, you know, an extended family. Very talented. But, yeah. 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 yeah, extremely, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And as, as we sort of begin the wrap up, I just want to double back to the <clears throat> Sundance kind of thing of, you know, it <clears throat> being 
you know, a real, a real big honor for a, an indie movie to be able to, to be there and to, you know, compete for attention. And I'm just curious about how you guys, how um, this year's version of the festival is, 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 you know, either, uh, I don't want to say plus or minus, because it's just different. It's just the way of the world. You're not going to, you know, all crowd around and, and be doing that. But do you, you know, as a movie that really feels like it could be a real good audience movie, does that, does that feel like a slight disappointment that, oh, you know, this should be seen with a bunch of people who are laughing and being surprised at the same time, as opposed to, you know, me on my couch like an idiot in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely was kind of, uh, uh, you know, we hope that it still will have that opportunity yeah. someday because we had a feeling while we were creating it that this, this is a crowd movie, you know? Yeah. But at the same time, you know, Sundance has been doing a really uh, uh, amazing job of putting this together, trying to do what they can to capture a collective, you know, viewing experience that's somewhat interactive uh, through the virtual world. So that's really cool. And then uh, we actually were fortunate enough to, um, to have a, a Northern California drive-in screening in San Francisco nice. as well. So there will be uh, you know, a, a group of people that get to experience this sort of in a crowd in a cool, in a cool way on a big screen. Um, but we're just so thankful that we even get to be included uh, in you know, the launch of the awesome filmmakers and, and actors who've gone through Sundance. For sure. Um, oh, yeah. And, and, and just for everyone as we wrap up, because I know we're, we're basically out of time, what's, is there something that you guys, as your careers progress and as you know, more opportunities come up, that if you could sort of ideally do something, is there a role or a genre or something that you would uh, you know, gravitate towards? Or if someone is like, you know, for you guys, like, uh, here's an open check, like, what do you want to do? And then for the actors, you know, if there's a, you know, we want to work with you, you can do anything you want. Is there a thing that would immediately pop up or is it still, I'm just so happy to be here? That's kind of the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, we, yeah, we've, we've had several ideas that we've talked about. I don't know which one we would actually try to tackle next, but. Yeah, I think that to be able to tell uh, exciting interesting and entertaining stories that maybe are a little odd or different uh you know uh would be amazing and uh you know we, we love to to have our fingerprints on different aspects of production when possible that's you know uh kind of like a, like robert rodriguez and you know he's a huge inspiration to us we just love to make movies yeah awesome and it shows and then for for you guys you know is there a, is there a thing in mind or you know, just keep putting me in movies, please. <laughs> I mean, yes, please keep putting me in yeah. movies. But um, no, yeah, I'm just super grateful to be where I'm at now, but also um, would love to continue. And I mean, I love acting so much. I would, you know, there's so many roles I would love to play, but, um, you know, anything opposite Leo DiCaprio in specific, yeah. uh, I think would be a lot of fun. I'll, I'll be sure to mention that to him. I'm sure he uh, okay. Thank you know, you. just passed the resume along. <laughs> Okay, great. Tyson, Leo, too, uh, or you got 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 someone else? <laughs> I got two guys in mind. Uh, big fans of Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan, Ooh. and I've I've been stalking them. Uh, they have a big <laughs> list of projects, and I'm just like, put me in any one of them, yeah. and I'm fine. I just love how these guys work together as a team, and I just kind of want to be a part of that team as well. So for sure, I I interviewed the two of them for Fruitvale, and and they have a very good yeah. vibe together. Where you're just like, okay, you you guys should always be working together like there's something yeah. that that happens and that's that's something you don't see every day so no i think i think you're on to something there so you know make sure make sure you find their number and just uh <laughs> send the movie ver the actor version of you up as much as you can <laughs> i'll but, try yes well well thank you guys for doing this and